Uh, did you hear Epic secures $1 billion in funding with Sony investing another 200 million. And at the same time, Epic is expected to lose over $300 million in its uh, legal battle with Apple. Um, mm -hmm. Well, Epic, keep, keep on doing you. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I think that funding from Sony is more related to their Unreal Engine more than anything, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's... See, that that's, that's the part of this like exclusivity that would get under my skin is if people start having like exclusive rights over engines like imagine if the re engine was yeah like stuck on a sony platform and Ooh, like, yeah. it would just I I, that gross. that's too far i feel the industry took so made so much progress to open up engine platforms like before unreal and unity specifically unity led the charge to making game engines accessible to everybody uh everybody ha had to build their own game engine or pay a lot of money to uh epic um exclusivity there would just be uh, a huge and, and all of that led to the boom of indie games and new ideas yes. and, and more games so to 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 kill that kind of momentum that the industry has gained would be really painful well it would also i mean it would completely shift it because of the fact that everyone would move over to like unity and engines that are more open and it would suddenly kill a lot of the momentum for something like unreal yeah unity yuck but then also at the same time you know that's gonna you know put, unity is allowed a lot of things to happen don't hate on it yeah that would but you know that also like puts an additional strain on the hardware you know who who can run what what's optimized for what and i don't even think that the hardware manufacturers can take another hit right now because i mean you know they're not only suffering because and and they nvidia said this week you know it's only going to get worse and like I've been trying to upgrade my graphics card, just one graphics card since November, and everything I try to buy is sold out. Each time I go in, is sold out. You know, consoles are at a shortage. It doesn't seem like it's getting better. Then you limit the software that runs on that hardware. And I think it's just yeah across the board a bad thing. Yeah, I think that also adds into the fact that a S Switch Pro would definitely move in the next year with all the crap that they're talking about with shortages and stuff. I just, it wouldn't make sense to try and shove it out the end of this year. Yeah. In other headlines you may have missed, uh, Castlevania is back on Netflix uh, with its final season next month and a new series could be coming, which when I saw that, Can't I'm like, wait. yeah, I'm like, oh, you can go to any era and just. Well, that's what they said is like, this I think will wrap up the Castlevania 3 slash Curse of Darkness story content. And right. then they've said like, the next one will be a whole new set of characters. So my guess is that they'll jump into like the Simon Belmont era yeah. or the Soma Cruz era or something like that. That's where my mind went right away. Either they go to the Simon because that's kind of a fleshed out era. Uh, Soma, because then they could create the story as they want. Yeah. Uh, or they could even go to the Order of Ecclesia, which has a very interesting angle there that they could go with. There's... Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the 1800s that opens up a lot of different things that you can do with the story. Yeah. And it isn't as locked in that particular time period, so there's a lot of freedom creatively. Yeah. I'm excited for for where where they go with oh, that. Oh, I am too. I'm I've rewatched <laughs> the I've rewatched the first 3 seasons like 5 or 6 times now, and I keep picking up on new little pieces oh, of nice. lore that they stuck in there. That's nice. Uh, in other headlines you may have missed, uh, Switch hardware shortages are possible later this year, uh, says the CEO of Nintendo, so as Tran was mentioning. Uh, in other Nintendo rumors, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance and or Radiant Dawn remakes may be possibly in development. I'm not in the Fire Emblem, but I hope to God this how it happens for the fans, because those two titles are so obscenely expensive and hard to get now. Those are the GameCube titles, right? GameCube and the Wii. Right. I would love yeah. to play those if they would make They're them accessible. They're good. I mean, what I've seen of them and what little bit that I played of them, like I'm not into the series myself, but they were really good games. Yeah. It's just they've been locked on that hardware. And even when they came out, they weren't huge print runs for either one of the systems. Mm -hmm. I picked up so, Radiant Dawn for like 25 bucks wow. a couple months ago. Wow. Really? Yeah. I had it's to go by the case, lucky. though. <laughs> that oh. thing, you, I usually see that in, like, the 80-plus range. Well, I was I, I went to this, like, thrift shop that's near me, and I was like, come on, this is 45 bucks that you have. It's just a game. <laughs> yeah. 
and I talked him down to about I I talked him down to thirty, and then I was like, "Come on, twenty five bucks." And oh my they were God. like, "Okay." Holy crap! Anthony disagrees with you, Tran. He says those are two of the worst that have been released in the U.S. in oh. terms of Fire Emblem games. Hey, I'm I'm just talking based on what I've talked to the fan base, and there's a lot of people that really dig on those games. And yeah. if you, you know, scrubbed them up with, uh, you know, HD graphics, it would only help. Actually, was it complete in box? Great. The one that I got? No. Yeah. That was it was the disc. Yeah, but then I ended up buying the disc, I think, from Amazon or Marketplace. I can't remember. I was going to say. Or not Amazon, the disc eBay. Is like 70 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And it was in, I think it's in good condition. It's somewhere behind me. 